Thank you very much, Daniel. It's a great pleasure to be here again with this very interesting panel. The panel talks about the next generation, the next generation that brings entrepreneurs to make them become a scale-up. Okay, now we have great, great speakers from both private and public sector. From the public sector, we will have Ana Cremades from the community of Madrid and David Alonso from the University of Complutense. And in the private sector, we will have David Miranda from Osborne and Clark and Victor Wick Wilk Smith, sorry, and Victor uh, from NetGuru. So let's do a big applause and welcome them immediately. <laughs> Come on, get in. Great, take a seat, please. Super. It's a great pleasure to have all of you here. Thank you very much for your participation in this great panel. And I'd like to start to, to ask maybe Ana Cremades, which is the, the Director of Research and Technological Innovation in Community of Madrid. Community of Madrid is the leader of the regions in Spain in supporting, in supporting tech startups, in supporting tech companies. So please tell us, Ana, how do you do it? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me and having me in this panel on behalf of our regional government. I'm very glad to be here with you. And, of course, Madrid um, is a region that had all the necessary ingredients to make the recipe uh, working. And um, we have uh, become, in the last years, a great uh, innovation hub. And I think that we have uh, different conditions that are um, all together putting our ecosystem in a great form. Uh, we have very dynamic and innovative uh, compa companies, all sizes, all sectors are in Madrid. And uh, our companies are very well connected in a region with uh, a strategic uh, position, with a preferential link, of course, to Europe, but also to uh, Latin America and even Africa. Uh, also, we thank you to South Summit. Yes, <laughs> yes of course. There we were. <laughs> very happy to represent Madrid also in Brazil. And we have an adventurous um, tax uh, system. Um, with uh, investors also, which are very attentive to innovation. We have also leading university, leading school business, leading research institutes, so that uh, the innovation based in knowledge can be accomplished uh, with uh, a collaboration with all of them. And uh, we have also a very important potential market. Nowadays, our potential mar market is uh, global, of course. And um, I think that we have built in the last years a very strong ecosystem. Uh, more than 26% of the companies with uh, uh, high intense innovation uh, are from Madrid in Spain. And the patents, uh, well, the figures of uh, investment also, we have great numbers and we are growing. So now is a, a good moment to, to be on board in Madrid. Very good, thank you very much. Victor, I know that you are becoming now, very soon, a board member of Endeavor, right? The NGO that grows companies, making them become unicorns. And now, apart from that, uh, you are the, the CEO of NetGuru, and taking care of it, and now NetGuru, I don't know if everybody knows it, but it has already on board 900 people, and growing since 14 years ago when it started. So tell us a little bit more, why is this so important to be, uh, to, to be working with NetGuru because it's a great tech partner? Yeah, so I mean, look, I, I, am, I have a kind of two hats here. I'm, I'm a guest, obviously, in Madrid. Uh, the company is based in Poland. We work with startups and, and scale-ups all around the world, uh, some of them also here in, in, in Spain. And, and what we see is that you know, there's, there's probably like three major things that scale-ups need as they, as they grow. Uh, and one of the biggest ones is access to talent. And I think, you know, we, we've been helping some of our clients, you know, access technology talent, product talent. Uh, and I think some of the most important part that ecosystems can 
support companies with is, is, this, is this actually this one of these challenges. It's access to talent on the technology side, on the business side, um, when they're, when they're you know, kind of uh, going into different markets. And I think in some ways, you know, Spain and Madrid specifically is, is very well positioned to do that. You know, I, I was at the party last night when there were people from Argentina, people from Brazil, people from all over the world using this, this, you know, this location as a kind of a gateway to Europe for them. So I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, opportunities to, to be able to, to grow. And I think the talent is really something that, that a lot of those ecosystems have to be thinking about. How do we make this uh, a place not only for, for founders' companies, but also for you know, engineers, you know, folks doing different things in, in high-growth startups, to be the place for them to, 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 you know, to, to come and, and, and grow? Great. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. And there's also very important another, another let's say, step for the companies that are growing up and scaling up. That's the legal part, right? Um, David Miranda is uh, the is a partner at Osborne Clark and can tell us why it is so important to have a legal partner when you are growing up. Well, I would say um, when you're growing up a business, um, inevitably you will find uh, roadblocks, problems, so especially if it's an innovative, an innovative business, right? So it's, uh, I think it's crucial to have a, a legal partner or in-house lawyers or uh, lawyers advising you, helping you to, to, to address these legal issues that you will find down the road. So the thing is that typically when, I, when companies are, are very small and starting up, they don't what I feel is they don't value the, the, legal, the legal world. They say, well, this is just a commodity. It's like, like uh, another consultant. And, and, and then they, you find things like, for instance, uh, you are doing due diligence on a company because you're working for an investor. I typically work for investors, investing in startups, scale-ups. And you are doing due diligence, and you read the terms and conditions of that company. And you say, OK, what the heck? This company is basically this is a copy-paste of a website of a competitor who is based in America. Actually, the terms and conditions, even, even though they are servicing to Spanish, Spanish customers, but the terms and conditions are subject to American law because they didn't bother even to change the law. Uh, a lot of issues with privacy, a lot of issues with, um, with obviously, one of the things when you think about hiring uh, legal counsel is when you're doing finance round. Um, then in that case, obviously, you need a, uh, a legal advisor to help you go through the shareholders agreement, investment agreement. But then you forget about the legal advisors and you go on basically copying what the other um, competitors do. And then when you are raising capital for investors, then you see, hey guys, you are not doing this properly. So you will need to address all these issues after doing due diligence. You will need to address all these issues after doing the investment. This is what we typically find. So I think, I mean, uh, having a legal advisor I think it's critical from the very beginning, and, and good legal advice. So I, always, I always like to, to, to mention uh, um, um, uh, some words that Jesus Encinar, uh, many of you will know Jesus Encinar, he's a very successful Spanish entrepreneur, based in Madrid, founder of Idealista, and he said in a, in a conference, he was talking to, to entrepreneurs, and he said, one of the first things you have to bear in mind, you need to have good legal counsel. So I think that's critical for, for succeeding in your business. Absolutely, yes. Great. Thank you very much, da David. Okay, we have another David. <laughs> <laughs> David Alonso, the director of Complu Emprende in University of Complutense. Uh, the University of Complutense is, let's say, the biggest face-to-face -face university yeah. in, in Spain. Yes, yes. It's uh, such an important uh, university, and it has a great initiative that is Complu Emprende, that where here is the leader. So, David, tell us a little bit about the next steps going on in, in the field. What, are, what is coming in? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to share some ideas about our future of, uh, as an entrepreneurship office. And nowadays we are structuring the, the office and the whole entrepreneurship uh, path and journey mm -hmm. uh, from a, uh, the whole, uh, with a whole vision because uh, we, we need to, to work uh, from an open innovation point of view. Mm -hmm. And okay, uh, this is a general idea, we know. Uh, but maybe the key point is uh, how can uh, we do it? Uh, 
nowadays we are uh, testing, in fact, in the, in the uh, South Summit, a new platform based on artificial intelligence with different advantages uh, for, for us. Uh, first of all, the, the platform, the tool, allows us to put in contact different players, different stakeholders, uh, public and private, both uh, mm -hmm. stakeholders, uh, corporates, uh, business angels, and uh, we have another advantage because uh, all stakeholders can follow the, the projects just from the beginning of the projects, even for the the, from the beginning of the idea. So when the projects uh, could uh, scale up in the future, in next steps, the projects uh, could be more uh, meter because, uh, okay, uh, has been designed for, for all the uh, stakeholders. And uh, the platform, based on uh, artificial intelligence, uh, offers us different reports with objective information. Mm -hmm. uh, reports based on the technology that even uh, could give us information about the uh, average of dilution recommended by the technology. Mm -hmm. So, all the players can uh, now uh, take, a, uh, take a part of the ecosystem about the Madrid and the uh, Complutense University uh, taking advantage of this platform. Very good. So, we all can use it. <laughs> yes. Great. Yes. Great. So, everybody knows uh, now. <laughs> everyone everywhere. <laughs> Not only for Madrid. Everybody knows now. You can start using it now. Perfect. Okay, Anna, tell us a little, bit, a little bit more about the initiatives that are going on in the community of Madrid to support entrepreneurs, to support tech startups, please. Yes, well, we have uh, several initiatives. Um, we have uh, six different uh, calls for grants to support uh, startups and uh, small uh, and medium enterprises. Um, most of these initiatives are focused on the startups uh, uh, for creation of the startup or uh, for having implemented uh, a first uh, uh, innovation project or, and so on. But many of them also link the startups and the small and medium companies to other um, stakeholders of uh, our ecosystem. So they are in consortia with uh, universities and research centers and even also with uh, big companies to, to offer them also the possibility to be a, a new stakeholder for this big company and a provider and, and so on to, to, to get uh, inside this uh, um, value chain of the... And uh, we have launched uh, just uh, two days ago uh, the Madrid Kilometer, uh, Kilometer Zero uh, Innovation and Startup Program. This uh, program um, will have uh, a lot of different initiatives. Some of them have already started with uh, uh, formal and informal training, networking, uh, education uh, projects uh, to bring the culture of uh, entrepreneurship to the university also, and um, uh, many others uh, like incubation uh, programs, uh, um, supporting different sectors. So uh, you will hear a lot about uh, this uh, new initiative of uh, Madrid in the next uh, few uh, months. And uh, we have a, a third um, uh, initiative that had, um, um, articulated uh, through the uh, Madrid Knowledge uh, Foundation, which is uh, one of our best tools for entrepreneurship with mentoring uh, uh, programs, uh, mentoring certificate with a business angels uh, network, with the European um, Enterprise uh, Network, mm -hmm. also working there and with the uh, ESAVIC and uh, Health Start uh, incubators uh, too. So this is uh, our, all our initiatives. And the last one, which is very, very important, is that we are trying to eliminate the burden of 
bureaucracy <laughs> in our uh, call. So we have made really an effort uh, that had started uh, hearing actively our ecosystem, boosting our regional uh, plan for um, research and innovation, and also with the uh, smart uh, specialization uh, strategy of the Comunidad de Madrid. And um, we are um, trying to get more easily for uh, startups and uh, small um, and medium enterprises uh, to accomplish all the requirements of uh, our grants. Only two announcements. Sure. Uh, we have a lot of uh, different initiatives around this, but uh, two of them that I think that are the, the the ones that are going to make uh, a greater impact at, are that we are eliminating totally for these uh, startups and uh, um, small uh, enterprises and medium enterprises the financial warranties or endorsement that we required before to, to apply for, the, uh, for our grants. Wow. Uh, we take the risk in the Comunidad de Madrid. Great. And uh, um, the uh, the other one um, is that we are making almost reducing to zero <laughs> the paperwork needed to apply for our um, grants in this phase. When you are uh, applying, you don't need to prove the legal requirements. You are only needing to prove all the re uh, and provide the paperwork once we award. The, the grant. So if you are applying and you are not uh, having uh, luck with the grant, at least you haven't had so much work at the, at the beginning. So we are working on it and, and we are open for any suggestion that could help our ecosystem. It's not an easy thing to eliminate bureaucracy and to increase transparency continuously. It's, yes. it's <laughs> continuous improving so, very good. Thank you very much. Yes, tell us, Victor, a little bit more. Wha what is your specialty in NetGuru? What are you finally, how are you helping them? Yeah, so, so we, we like to say that we, we help startups, scale-ups and corporates build digital products. So, so it's really about you know, building something that hasn't been done before. It's not always going to be rocket science. It's, it's, you know, sometimes it's, it's you know, trying to apply some of the kind of well-known solutions into new markets, new industries. Um, so our clients come to us because they, they want to innovate. And, and some of them, this is what they do because they're a startup, they're just starting, they're building something new. And some of those are, are corporates that want to become, you know, they want to kind of uh, disrupt themselves bef before the new, the new entrants disrupt them, so we can help them you know, from the ideation side through you know, design, product design, implementation, and then uh, building those products. And what we've seen is, I think, um, some of the most innovative uh, companies that we are able to work with really understand that you need to do pretty much everything. And you need to try to you know, innovate in all the different areas of your business. You need to try different routes. You need to be ready to kind of risk and experiment, like what you said, you know, taking those risks and, and really accepting that probably, I don't know, between 50, 80% of what you're going to do is, is going to end up being some kind of a waste, but it's going to be a learning for the organization. It's going to be a learning for, uh, to understand the market better. Um, and this is something that traditionally I don't think is... Uh, is very well understood, especially in large corporates. Like you, you know, if you start a project, there has to be a there has to be a roadmap, there has to be a business case, and if it if it doesn't you know end up being a positive uh, ROI, it's somehow a failure. And for for our clients, the, the, the most innovative ones to can understand that you know if in, if in the project fails, the, the learning is the ROI from from the project. So um, I think this this kind of mindset of of being able to fail and and getting some of the startup mindset, startup. Uh, way of thinking uh, for the larger corporates or, or scale-ups that they're at the stage where they already you know, have an established core business um, is something that definitely makes a, a huge difference for, you know, for at least for our clients. Great, yeah. thank you. Great, sounds very good. Learning a lot in this panel. Okay, David, uh, tell us a little bit more about, well, how can you, can you call, hell, what's the challenges that they, they find? You have told us a little bit about of that. Well, 
I mean, uh, I think one of the first challenges that you find when you are building up a business generally in Spain is, is facing the government. So this is why I'm, I'm so excited to hear what Ana is explaining about Madrid, because Madrid is doing super good. I'm based in Barcelona, so I'm actually jealous <laughs> of what you're doing here, because Barcelona used to be, you know, the place for startups, entrepreneurs. And now Madrid, Madrid catch up, catch it up with, uh, with Barcelona uh, some years ago. Now it's on the lead. So it's incredible what you, it's amazing what you are doing. So one of the things is facing all the regulations, all the bureaucracy. And then another typical, another typical challenge that startups find is when they are international, uh, doing the internationalization, right? So they, when, they, when they're starting selling their products abroad, uh, setting up subsidiaries uh, in other jurisdictions. So uh, basically they need to, to have uh, legal advice. Just not only Spanish legal advice, because you need to have advice also in those jurisdictions. And everybody wants to go to America, right? So everybody wants to go to the United States. It's a huge market for technology. Um, and the thing is that, believe me, if you think a Spanish lawyer is expensive, it's because you don't know, you don't know <laughs> how much an American lawyer charges, because it's incredible. So yeah, there are, there are a lot of uh, challenges. And, and, and actually, uh, one of the things I, found, uh, I find um, is uh, dealing with the stock options. This is one of the things that, you know, in Spain, we are in the process of approving a, a law for startups, and they are trying to introduce some changes. At the end of the day, I say, I don't think the, the person is coming, is coming in, in, a, in a couple of hours, but I think, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a lot of smoke. Uh, I don't think that law will, will actually introduce any material changes in what we're doing this uh, here in Spain. So this is why it's so important that uh, local authorities like Madrid uh, helps uh, this innovative ecosystem to, to foster, to grow, and to, and to be successful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, David, tell us a little bit more about how do you do the steps with the companies? How do you help them grow? Okay. Yes. Uh, I want to draw your attention to his uh, several ideas in, in this way, because uh, first of all, uh, if we remember the center of the golden cycle of Simon uh, Sinek, the reasons why we need um, bigger uh, companies, uh, is the, the global challenge uh, for, for us. No? We need to uh, confront us the global challenge from the entrepreneurship. First of all, in, in my opinion, uh, the bigger uh, companies, the more probably to confront us uh, global challenge. Uh, what's the role of a public university as the uh, Complutense? Okay, we can uh, put for the citizens the, the tools. We can uh, contact different uh, fields of knowledge. It's important because in the Complutense University, we have uh, every, uh, every uh, the whole uh, knowledge, uh, all knowledge in the, in the university. And the, the knowledge uh, should be uh, connected between them. All eh? the specialities, all right? All the speciality. Them. Imagine uh, one team uh, from uh, it takes. Uh, imagine uh, one student or professor from uh, marketing or from uh, geography and history and put together, put together. The university maybe is an internal ecosystem as well mm -hmm. in, this, in this way. And it could be another, another advantage of the, of the university. Of course, we have our uh, own uh, programs of financing uh, projects. Mm -hmm. eh? And, uh, and now uh, we have different contacts and, and links with uh, groups, corporates, and international uh, founders eh? as well. Very good. In order to, uh, to finance a project. Absolutely. It's basic to collaborate with all the players in order to really boost them, create a real ecosystem that is friendly, right, for them. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's do a little a small round to, to tell us a little bit more about your personal experience in helping tech startups. Who wants to start with this question? <laughs> David, go for it. Well, I don't know. I think it's really, really exciting because we are approaching to the, to the next gener generation and with the global world that needs entrepreneurship uh, in order to improve uh, ourselves. 
-hmm. but you have a lot of contact with all the startups, right? Yes, of course, our own startups and other startups. Uh, this platform that I was mentioning uh, previously is a Spanish startup, but in the uh, in Barcelona, but with partners in different uh, continents as well. So the the cooperation is one of the key. We know it. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I think that personal experience is very rewarding when uh, you are doing such an effort and uh, you have uh, and you see some impact. Uh, here in South Summit, I, I have uh, met different startups that were telling, thank you, Comunidad de Madrid, because of the CRAN, and, and then when you see that they can scale up, it's uh, really rewarding also in a personal way. And I would say né, that uh, Madrid is very open, and uh, Madrid is also uh, trying to, to share um, the success even. Uh, we have now this uh, open market law, so I invite uh, all the startups, not only in Barcelona, but everywhere, to, to have also uh, an eye put on Madrid, because if you are legally uh, established in a region in Spain, you are also legally established in Madrid. So we have made this an open region, uh, and uh, we are making a lot of uh, different efforts to, to make uh, from Madrid a friendly place to start a business and, and to have uh, success. Very good. So good. So I, I don't need to move to Madrid. I can stay by the sea <laughs> and be like part of the Madrid ecosystem. That's, yes. That's yes. So good. You that's know, so good. We, we are open and uh, we have Madrileños from everywhere. Madrileños <laughs> from the mundo. Yeah, yes. That's, that's, you, that's know, you know that. That's incredible. No, that's incredible because, uh, as I was saying, I come from a, a place where we used to have, uh, like, say, the, the first place, the first technology hub in, in Spain. And now Madrid is doing is doing super good. So so it's it's very it's very it's very good to have to be here. I, I also have offices here, so I come every now and then. And in terms of uh, helping startups, um, generally, I mean, uh, all startups they need legal advice at some point. Uh, the sooner the better, even from the shareholders' agreement with the initial initial shareholders, founders, investors, and and everything related to to growing the business, hiring employees. So, I mean, um, it's critical. Uh, I mean, it's like I'm selling my, my services to, to, to the audience, but it's, it's, it's uh, very important to have legal advice when you are uh, starting up a business and reliable advice, right? Yeah, so for me, I mean, I, I spent probably uh, a, a good number of hours every week over the last year trying to set up um, the Polish chapter of Endeavor. So a lot of you here would know Endeavor even in Spain for probably like seven, eight years. Some of the you know, most well-known startups like you know, Cabify or Glovo are part of the, of the community of the network, are Endeavor entrepreneurs, and, uh, and they've never been in Poland. So we, we kind of spend a year setting it up. It's literally just getting started in Poland. So we're kind of like also interested to learn from the you know, local ecosystem here in Barcelona as well, how can we leverage this network both kind of uh, you know within in, within Poland, but also like in connection with you know with, with Madrid, with Barcelona, with all the different um, endeavor offices around the world. And I, and I was the, the party I, I mentioned last night was kind of a, you know kind of organized I think by one of the endeavor board members here in in, in Spain. And, and I was really impressed, like first of all how big the party was and how big the the local community and and how how vibrant the local community is through this network and obviously you know through through South summit and some other stuff and we're really excited to try to replicate this and, and build on this uh, kind of success also in Poland and, and get those you know also uh, ecosystems connected because they are also quite connected a lot of folks who do and run successful startups in Poland are very much connected to Barcelona to, to some of the other you know European cities because if you build a global business you kind of have to be uh, interconnected I think and then building those those ecosystems is always going to be like this balance of you know keeping the local community together and tight, but also opening it up to all the other places and, and trying to collaborate and trying to you know work together basically. Sounds very good. Thank you very much. So I see that growth goes directly related with internationalization, as you see, which is very important, and where it is very important the support of a tech partner, the support of a legal partner, the support of the local and regional um, public entities that should also boost those initiatives. I see that uh, probably the main, main uh, 
subject here that we have all agreed is that helping tech companies is basic for the growth of the region, the country, the world in general, because it's really the motor of the growth of, of the society. So yes, I think uh, that's a great point. And the most important thing also is the collaboration between all the entities to create a good ecosystem that is friendly to make companies grow up and really develop themselves and develop their capacity. Well, I think that's all. There is maybe any other question from the public that want to, in like 30 seconds, maybe? <laughs> any question for the public? No? Yes? What would I, what would I say? Maybe I, I should ask, what's the best thing of South Summit today for you? Each one of you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the best uh, today. Uh, okay, we are attending all the, during the, the fair uh, a lot of students, not only from the Complutense University, but the, all the universities here in, in Madrid. And it's very, very interesting the, to confront the, the visions. Good. Yeah. I think uh, that maybe today the highlight could be the night of the ideas, which Great. is going to take part in, in Cologne with a really big party and with the collaborator of uh, many citizens that uh, give us um, what they think about innovation and their own ideas too. And a concert. Yes, and a concert. <laughs> and a con <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, the going funny... <laughs> Very good. The contribution very good. is more relevant than the other, but <laughs> <laughs> I would like to highlight <laughs> the innovation part. Yeah, I, would say, I would say generally being in Madrid is so great and actually um, uh, having Madrid the night life, everything, the sunny, the sunny place, I ended up just at 6 a.m. in a Tony Bar Piano, which is a, a well-known uh, club, night club here in Madrid, so it, it's great to, have to be here. Um, I mean, uh, this is a great event. I'm happy to come every year when I'm invited. I'm, I'm really happy and really excited about being here in Madrid. So, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm, it's my first time at the uh, South Summit. I'm, I'm actually very impressed, you know, by how, how big it is. Maybe the venue is even a little bit too small to the number of people that we have here uh, and how, how, vi how vibrant it is. And for me, always, you know, when there's a conference, the content yeah, I mean, it's important, but like even you guys being here, like you've, you've missed a lot of content that's on other stages. So I think <laughs> you cannot really get the, the, the content and in the end, but the connections you can make and, and the fact that it feels like everybody in the tech community is here right now, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Like you can, you can have access to so many people just by you know, spending two or three days uh, in just this one location. So I think this is super exciting. And for me, it's always going to be at any conference. It's, it's content is great. Like we, you know, happy to talk a little bit. But at the same time, like the connections you can make are always going to be the biggest uh, takeaway for me. Great. Thank you very much, Victor, David, Anna, and David. This yeah, has been panel. great to have you here. Uh, thank you very much to everyone to have here listen to us. Thank you.